at the time of the Holocaust, many people were in a similar situation like we are today. Anyone that studies the Holocaust a little bit will see that it's almost identical. With the exception of iPhones and iPods, everything else was the same. Intermarriage before the Holocaust in certain parts of the world, especially Germany, was over 80%. Intermarriage in America, which is the modern day Germany, is over 80%. That means that 8 out of every 10 Jews in America, we have 6 million Jews in America, give or take, 8 out of every 10 are marrying non Jews. Hashem Yachim. Now that means if things continue, they continue marrying Goyim. We are one generation away from simply not having Jews. Hashem Yishmo. When someone asks you, where was God during a Holocaust? The honest Torah answer is, he did it. That's the answer. How do we know he did it? He said he's going to do it. He said in Parashat Kitisa. He said in Parashat Kitavo. He said in Parashat Azinu. He said in Parashat Bechukotai. If we don't do certain things, he'll punish us. But specifically, things like intermarriage, Chilul Shabbat, things of that nature, he says the punishment is very, very heavy. To such an extent that he gives you details of what happens if we don't take him seriously. He says, You treat me with casualness. You don't care about what I say. I'm going to treat you with casualness when the Goyim start anti-Semitism for no reason, like a Shemishmo happened in New York just a couple of months ago. One day, a bunch of people decide to start killing Jews for no reason. This was a warning shot. This is not like something like, oh, it happened, it went away, it's quiet now. No, this is a warning. Kadosh Baruch is talking to us very carefully. Why? He's trying to get our attention because he doesn't want to bring another Holocaust. But the Holocaust happened because we didn't take the, sh the warning shots seriously. He sent us a bun bunch of warning shots for a long period of time. We didn't take it seriously. So Kadosh Baruch says, listen, if I let you continue acting like Goyim, continue violating Shabbat, continue uh, the, the intermarriage, continue dishonesty, continue charging people interest that's absurd, like what's happening in the merchant cash advance business today, Hashem Yishmo. People are just completely robbing people blind, thinking it's permitted because it's goyim. Oh no, I'm only charging him 50%, uh, Rabbi, only 50%. I'm like, oh, so you're only taking half of his life, not the whole thing. You're only murdering half of him. No, but Rabbi, he's a goy. I said, it's worse if he's a goy. No, I thought, Rabbi, that you only, uh, you're allowed to charge uh, goyim interest. I said, who told you this? Doesn't it say it somewhere in a book? I said, you did, you're relying, your whole olam ba is relying on something you never saw in a book. You have a whole business every day, you're lending people money because somebody told you you're allowed to do it. Now, you know, if you're wrong, if you're wrong about this, doesn't matter if you keep Shabbat. Doesn't matter if you do everything else right. If you're wrong about this one thing, you have no Allah about You're finished. You go up to Shabbat and say, okay, yeah, you go to the hot place. Why, but I kept Shabbat. Yeah, we'll shut off the fire on Shabbat. You kept Shabbat, we'll shut off the fire on Shabbat. Yeah, but somebody told me. Did you see it in a book? No, but somebody told me. I'm sorry. If a person makes a mistake because he didn't study, HaKadosh Baruch doesn't count it as a mistake. He counts it as if he did it on purpose. Why? You didn't study Torah on purpose. You cannot just say, I didn't know. You can't go up to Shammai and say, Hashem gave you 70, 80, 90 years, and say, I didn't know. Okay, did you not know because you didn't get to it yet? You studied everything else except this? Or you didn't know because you just didn't feel like studying? If you didn't feel like studying, then that means you didn't know on purpose. Because for your business, you studied for 20 years. For your law degree, you study for 20 years. For to learn how to be a good jeweler, a good uh, doctor, a good anything else, you studied for a long time. So how come you didn't learn how to be a Jew? How come you didn't learn for that? Oh, you didn't care. Okay, so you didn't care on purpose. So now you're in a business that's not kosher, and you're relying on someone said that's kosher, but did you see it? No. So you're relying on hearsay. You're relying on somebody, other body, uh, somebody else's word. So if somebody told you, listen, uh, uh, sir, uh, I don't know your name, but I think your wife is cheating on you. You're just going to take his word? Or are you going to check it out? Are you just going to divorce her right away? Oh, listen, uh, I think your son, 
yeah, I think your son is trying to kill you. You're just going to take his word because he just told you your son is trying to kill you or you're going to check it out? Like somebody tells you something shocking, you're just going to accept it or you're going to check it out? In a Torah, Rabotai, anytime you have a shiur Torah, the rabbi is supposed to provide you sources. What book it's from? Where is it from? Why? This is, shows us, this, this comes, what he just said, comes from Mount Sinai, not his opinion. We don't care about anybody's opinion in Judaism. We care about Mount Sinai. That's the source. Mount Sinai is when we met God in public, millions and millions of people. If what someone says doesn't come from Mount Sinai, it doesn't really have much value. It's an opinion. Next week it's going to change. One day he likes blue, next day he likes green. People's opinions change every day. God doesn't change. So if you're going to be in a business that is assuming you're allowed to do something, you have to check it out. Now, when it comes to lending, a person needs to know that even lending money to Goim with charging interest is not so pashut. It's not so simple, meaning you cannot just charge them whatever you want, and you cannot even charge them interest just because of that. And a lot of people don't know this, and they just assume they could do whatever they want, and they don't realize that it's actually what they're doing is a worse sin. Is a worse sin than lending to, to Jews with interest. And the reason why is because if you cheat a Jew... You cheat one Jew. Chas v'shalom. That Jew is going to say, you're a bad guy. You're a bad girl. I don't like you. Why? You cheated me. Now, if you cheat a non-Jew, what does the non-Jew say? Ah, all Jews are bad. It's not just you anymore. Everybody's bad. And that's called chilul Hashem. That's called, we just desecrated Hashem's name. That's much worse than him just saying you're a bad person. So when we do something bad to Goim, it's much, much worse than doing something bad to Jews. That doesn't mean we should do bad, something bad to Jews. But the point being here is that we have an entire industry that's been built over the last 15, 20 years called cash advance, merchant cash advance, that's predominantly led by Jewish people. Many of them pretend to be religious. That they, because they have you know, religious clothes on, uh, and, and the beard that grows for free. And the reality is that they are doing the same thing that we did in almost every generation that had a disaster. If anyone ever read Mein Kampf from Hitler, Hitler tells the world why he hates Jews. He says the Jews created communism. The Jews of that time were communists. They hated religion. They hated Torah. They hated God. So they created something called communism. Hitler thought of himself as a God believer. He thought of himself as someone religious, even though he murdered millions of people. He justified it based on his demented ideology. That's what Christianity has been doing for 2,000 years. But the point is, one of the reasons why he hated Jews was because they were anti-God. But another reason that he sold to the people, that he said, you hate Jews also, even if you don't care if they're religious or not. It's because Jews are taking advantage of you. And people said, how? He says, the Jews are the ones that are in control of all of the banks that are lending you with high interest. And everybody said yes. Why? Because it was true. The Jews destroyed the economy in, in, in Germany by simply lending money with high interest. People that cannot meet this demand, the business is not growing as high as they thought it was going to grow, ended up closing down shop and saying, listen, I'm defaulting and declare bankruptcy. I have to start all over. But now they found out, oh, the guy that did all of this to me, not, he's not blaming himself. He has to blame somebody else. Oh, it was the Jewish guy. When Hitler says, yeah, all of the lending is from the Jews, everybody joined him. Overnight, a loser named Hitler that never had anything significant of, of meaning became a world leader that's very powerful. Why? A Baruch says, you didn't listen to the warnings. Now here's the message. 500 years before that in Spain, the same thing happened. 900 years in England, it happened. 1186. The Jewish people were doing really well financially. Primary business, lending money. Ignoring the Torah rules. One day, the leader of the, uh, of the place goes on vacation. They go in to decide to start mass murdering Jewish people in the streets. Why? We're tired of paying you interest. We're tired of doing this. This Rabotai Karim is repeating the same story over and over again. This is why Shlomo Amelech 3,000 years ago says, 
it's not allowed to lend people money with interest, even if they're not Jewish. So now, that means that where is this leniency to lend Jew, uh, non-Jews money with interest comes from? It comes from the Gemara, it comes from a few Chachamim that say, it's only allowed if the person is a Talmid Chacham, meaning he studies Torah all day, he studies Torah all day, so he doesn't have time to go work on Wall Street, or work on uh, Diamond District, or work construction, because he learns Torah all day, but he needs to make a living. So he has a little bit of money his parents gave him, or some people gave him, he can lend it to some guy, charge him just enough money, to make a living, he needs 2,000, 3,000 a month, that's all he's allowed to make. Meaning, you're not allowed to become wealthy off of this money, which is the opposite of what's happening. This is an industry that has grown so big that in just the last five or six years, there's been at least a half a dozen companies that have become public companies, billion dollar companies, from simply doing a business that's destroying the economy. And if that's not bad enough, just to show you how bad it is, everyone knows that the, uh, the mob, the mafia, their primary business was lending money for years, for all of generations. That's what the Italians did, that's what they did. You didn't have money from the bank, nobody was able to lend you. You go to the uh, Tony from the mafia, he says, how much do you want? I want 100,000, okay, 100,000, 30 points a week. Pretty much by the time you paid him back the loan, you gave him also two lungs too. Or he took him out of you. One way or the other, he's getting his money back. This business of merchant cash advance business is so horrible, the mafia shut down. They don't lend money in the streets anymore. You know how they lend money? They also open merchant cash advance businesses. Why? There's more money there, legally. If the mafia is your co-worker, that already gives you enough of an understanding it's not a good business. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us warning signs. When we don't follow them, problems happen. 